spoken over our lives that now we are seeing the change. We are seeing the transition. And if you're just coming in, like the page, share the page, be that evangelist and sharing it with your loved ones. The text is out of 2 Peter. They're in chapter 1, verse number 10. That we make every effort to confirm the calling, the election of this office because we are calling out. Just like John the Baptist, he was calling out. He was the one in the wilderness calling out. Who are we calling out to? I'm telling you, we got to go into the highways and the byways. As a church, many are missing it because they're staying in the four walls. And God has so much work to be done on the streets, in our neighborhoods, in our surrounding areas, that the voice of God must go out. The one of the calling. What are we speaking? We have to change our vocabulary. That we see. I want you to go back. There in one verse number one. Right there where we're at. The word is saying. Receive a faith. As precious. As ones. We receive it. By faith. And it's precious to the ones. We have to know that we're believing and that we're receiving in the faith and we're blessed by the ones. We have to see. If you look into, it talks about a divine power. God wants to move in His power, His divine power as Everything is available. Everything what we need for a godly life. Come on now. Because I don't want to go there. <laughs> God didn't say it was going to be for a bum life. He didn't say it was going to be, I'm going to say it. He didn't say it was going to be for no hoochie life. Come on now. I just said a word right there. God said that this divine power, everything will be established. Everything God has for you for a godly life. I'm telling you, that's the divine power that we need. We receive it by faith. We speak forth. We call it in. We reel it in. Come on now. And God is already bringing the pass. I told you on Sunday. I know, I know it wasn't Spanish. But on Sunday, God created all that's in the earth for us. All that we ever need is provided. When God needed the rains to come, it didn't need to come from the heavens. It came out from up and out the earth. Before it even rained in the ground. Because the earth was already empty and void. It says the earth was already filled with water. Can I hear the church say amen? But we are called and we are called of his own. We are called. As you read it, I'm telling you, it's breaking it down. There in verse 3, it's cutting it up. It's saying that we are His and we have His glory. See, this is God's glory. I'm just telling the story of God's glory. And if you read a little bit more, it's God's glory with God's goodness. God's glory with God's goodness, with God's greatness of His precious promises that He has in store for us, church. I'm telling you, He has created us, as you keep on reading down, He has created us to participate 
and His divine nature as you read it. Participating is when we work in it. We got to get our hands dirty. We pick up our sleeves and begin to do the work. We are working. We're working. It's working. Come on, church. It's working. Why? Because we are participating in the work that God has for us of His divine nature. How come He just didn't say? He already mentioned divine power. Well, that sounds like a whole lot, Miss Tina. Well, I'm telling you, when he's talking about nature, he's talking about us in the flesh. You know, my brother says it this way. I, you know, I can't see myself out of it. But that doesn't mean that we have to be moved by it. I just said a word right there. We don't have to be moved by our feelings and emotions. God was never an emotional God. He said that he was moved with compassion. When he cried for Lazarus, he was moved with compassion. And that's what God wants us to see. Out of the eyes of compassion of those who have needs. Come on, church. I just said a word right there. God wants to use our life. And he wants us to use our faith. I'm telling you, faith is a big word tonight. Because we're speaking in the realms of faith. We have to come back to faith. We've trust in our cars. We've trust in our houses. We've trust in our jobs. But nobody's not trusting in God. We're having faith in all these natural things instead of having faith in God. Well, you're asking me, how do you figure that? Well, are you crying out to God? Are you in your faith, in your need, in your wants? Because that's what my Bible tells me. It's needs and the wants. Because he's going to meet your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. And he is there to meet your wants. But he knows when you're wrong. Come on now. Because you may want a lot of things, but if they're not going to be good for you, you know what? Don't go there. (laughs) I'm talking about a godly life. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go. I already told you, girl. I already said we're not, we're not. This is a godly life. Faith. God is stretching our faith. It may look hard for a moment, but God is stretching our faith. I don't know what to do in this hour, but God is stretching our faith. I don't know how things are going to get done, or this is going to happen, that's going to happen. If I don't do this, if I don't do that, and then your hair is all stressed out all the way, or you barely don't have any because you're already pulling it out. Because we're not working our faith. We're not expressing our faith. The vocabulary of speaking in the realms of faith. See, as you read on there, I haven't moved. As you read on, you see that faith, God has added goodness to the faith. And I'm moving fast, church. God has added goodness to the faith. God has added the knowledge to the faith. God has added the self-control to the faith. God has added the perseverance to our faith. God has added the godliness to our faith. That may be hard to think. But God has blessed you in all the faith. I'm telling you. Even this mental, 
this affection. It's added to our faith that we live by faith and not by sight. And God has added His love. There you go. Come on now. I'm telling you, and I'm going to do that again. God has added His love and boundless and boundless because when we don't see all these things working in our lives, we will see here that we will be ineffective and unproductive. If you go and you read out of Romans chapter 4, you will see the life of Abram. That as he moved in faith, it was all accounted into righteousness unto our king. As we see, the righteousness was through the faith. There were footsteps of faith. I'm telling you, the life of Abraham. You can read it, write it down, and go back to it. And I want to spe speak strength over your life here today. That everything that you have done, if you have sown your time into Christ, whatever it may have been, going into other things, doing other things, but you are learning, you're soaking, you're grabbing in. The Word of God says out of Psalms there in chapter 28, verses 7 and 8, that the Lord, the Lord is my strength and my shield. I want you to captivate that in your life. Because we can't be waking up, you know, early in the mornings and not feeling it. Oh, just, just pull the covers more over the head. Come on now. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my stronghold. Come on now. The Lord is my word. The Lord is my anointing. The Lord is my dance. Come on now. I'm speaking strength over your heart here tonight. And I'm moving fast. They're in Psalms 18. One through two. God is my strength. God is my strength because he renews me on a daily basis. And I'm almost finished. I want you to write one more down. And Psalms 119, 28 and 29. You will see that God develops a stability for our lives. I'm telling you, church. God develops a stability for our lives. He draws the strength from God. And we're exercising our faith. We're exercising our strength. Doing what He tells us to do. Because it's not by might, nor by power. But by the Holy Spirit of God that He's endowed you with strength here today. And I'm telling you. I am praying over your life here today that God will endow you with strength to go where you need to go, to do what you need to do, the calling that is upon your life, that you shall act in faith to the Lord our God. I'm going to end it there, church. The Lord has so much more for you. And if you just came in on the wind, I'm telling you, come in and come back out. Because we're fixing to shout it out. Amen. We're going to rejoice on this last song and we'll be closing. Amen. And as we close, we're just going to shout out. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for here tonight the word that which you have given. Help us, Lord, to keep a watch over our mouths that we will not be speaking negative words, that we will be speaking words of empowerment, 
words of love and joy and of sound mind. I have my sound mind. I'm walking in my anointing. I'm walking in my calling. God has 